to the animating part. Before you start animating, I want to introduce you to one of the most underutilized features in the Final Cut Pro timeline, and that is the Clip Keyframes window, for lack of a better term. If you hit Option T on the keyboard or click this button down here, you will open up kind of this strange little keyframe indicator down here. Most people don't use this because it's kind of strange and it's not as intuitive as simply working here in the, in the motion tab of the viewer. But used in conjunction with this and it can be very powerful and very easy to use. Right now we can see all of our, all of our photos, but let's zoom in a little bit so that we can see just the first two that we're going to work on. And I'm going to do that by hitting Command and the plus key. This is a very good shortcut to learn. Command plus and minus will zoom in and zoom out of your sequence. So I'm just going to go close enough where I can see the first two pictures. Now I'm also going to make this little section a little bit bigger just so it's a little easier to see. And you can do that by hovering right on the edge between the clip and this little box. You can just hover on the edge until you get a cursor that looks like that. And then you click and drag and that will make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to just drag this down, just make it a little easier for us to see. Okay. So now this blue line indicates any and all keyframes that are going to exist for this particular clip. Now the one last thing that I want to do uh, is to gang these two monitors together. Now if you've never used the gang function, it's really, really handy for making adjustments to a clip when you're going to make similar adjustments to clips down the road on your sequence. So if you're, say, let's say, doing a lot of color correction or uh, what we're doing, which is animating each one of these photos, the gang function can really help you out. And I'll show you how this works. Double click to load Photo 01 into the viewer. If you click this middle button here and you select Open, what it will do now is the viewer will mimic the position in the source of the affiliate clip that's inside the timeline. You'll note it's moving right in here as we cross to dissolves, it switches to the next clip and switches to the next clip. So just by scrubbing in the, in the timeline here, I can change the source that's added into the viewer. And this is very handy. With the Photo 1 clip in our viewer, I'm going to click on the Motion tab and I'm going to lay my first keyframes down. And when I animate in Final Cut, I will just in general mark keyframes at the beginning of the clip for scale, rotation, and center. Because sometimes I don't know what I plan to do. And I may want to rotate the clip, I may not want to rotate it, but it always helps to have the keyframes there and add it in just in case. And if you can see it, it's a little hard to see, but there's a tiny little blip right here on this blue line to indicate that we've added keyframes on this photo. Scrub forward to, we get to the end, and you'll notice that there's the rockets, the rocket media exists all the way to the end of this dissolve, but if we waited till we get to the very end of this dissolve, we can't see the rocket ship sufficiently to see if our animation ends up in the place where we want it to. So what I do is I, I just move to just before the dissolve, select the photo here in the timeline so that I can get my wireframe. And if you're not seeing your wireframe, click up here and make sure in your canvas that it's set to image plus wireframe. Then I can simply grab the corner here and drag to zoom it in or zoom it out. We're going to zoom it in a little bit. And, and it's a little hard now to, to grab any of the corners of this once I've zoomed past what I can see in the canvas. So what you can do with the canvas selected, you can hit the command minus keys to zoom out of the view in the canvas so that we can see our whole wireframe again. And I can continue to grab it and, and, and zoom in. And then I can move it a little bit like this and maybe even click on the side and rotate it slightly, you know, if I feel like doing that. Kind of get it to where you want it, like that. And you can watch the animation, just scrub through and see if you like it, see if it works. Now, in this keyframe overlays window, I can click on this little keyframe right here and drag it off to the right until I get to the edge of the cross dissolve. And you'll notice up in the viewer that it moved all three of the keyframes to that edge. Even though we hit the dissolve, that picture is still moving. Okay. Now, I don't have to load the next clip into the viewer. 
I can simply just scrub forward in the timeline and the next, the next clip automatically loads into the viewer. And, it, and you stay on the motion tab, which is very handy, because now I'm going to continue to make more animation. And I don't even have to start my keyframes at the beginning of this photo. I can do it anywhere and just move it afterwards. So I'm just going to go like that, go right before this dissolve. And uh, with it selected, just zoom in again, like so. Let's rotate this one that and then I grab my keyframe drag it to the beginning of the cross dissolve and then the end of the other cross dissolve it'll move all of the uh, keyframes that you placed so even though I moved I did three different sets of keyframes they all moved at the same time simply by dragging in this keyframe window here so now if I play through these first two clips let's uh, select and fit to window there you see that it's zooming in and rotating, nice dissolve, and this one's doing a nice dissolve as well. And I can continue to go along as well. So now I have each one of these clips will have its own specialized animation, and I just keep going until I get all of my clips done the way I like it. So I'm just going to do one more here. Let's zoom in, and we won't put any rotation on this one. We just have the uh, scale and the center changed. But again, I'm going to grab the keyframe in the keyframe window here and drag it to the beginning and end of those dissolves. Get a nice little move there. All right, there you go. I can hit Option T or click this when I'm done, and I've got my nice, my nice little uh, montage, fully customizable. This is Andy Neal, and this has been a Final Cut Pro quick tip.